checklist, it's good for you, but you can also give it to your clients because it'll say like day 15 or day 20, like, so they know where we're at in the process. So they're not calling you and like, okay, I haven't heard from anybody in a couple of days. What's going on now while we're waiting on the inspection to come back or so you, you know what to tell them. They kind of know it gives you a guideline of where you should be at with your paperwork, mm. all that good stuff. Um, is it in command? If it's not in command, you're not going to get paid for it. And after, after you do all that hard work, you're going to want to get paid. Um, in command, it actually helps you track what's left, what, what you need to do, what's missing. Um, so that's a really good tool to utilize to help stay, uh, stay organized throughout the transaction process is getting all that taken care of. And then, um, if you do have anything under contract and you need help, you need help finding the contract to close checklist, you need help setting up an opportunity or anything like that. Um, I've put all my contact info on this slide, so feel free to reach out. Um, I can schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. I can walk you through it on the phone if it's just a simple question. Um, but the main goal is to is to keep you organized because as long as you're organized, that's one less thing you have to be stressed out about. So that's what we're here for. Anybody have any questions about any of those things that she just went over? In other words, she is going to keep you organized. Does that sound good when you've got a question about those kind of things? If I were y'all, I would take at least a picture of this slide or get her information and get it in your phone right now so that you can uh, get back with her if you need to do that. Does everybody have it? Okay, I'm going to move on then. All right, Carrie. Um, does anybody have any listings right now? So this kind of goes the same way. Uh, we have systems in place and checklists. So you get a listing and then you think, okay, now what? Um, we've got an input sheet that you've got to fill out to get it into MLS. I can help you um, figure out what needs to be put in MLS because there's a lot of guidelines and rules. And if you have not, I know there's a lot of new agents. You have to take the um, online training class through Nabor with Lisa. She does it like every other Wednesday. You have I think two to three months to take it. So if you have not taken that, um, make sure you get on her books to do that. And that'll help as well. But that's one of those things. Um, when I took the class, I thought, oh, I know all this information. And then I had a listing to input like three weeks later and thought, well, I don't remember any of this. So um, if you have questions when you go into it and start, I'm, I'm more than happy to help you with that. And then uh, when you have a listing, we've got all these open house resources and everything in box. So if you just feel lost, let me know because we probably have a spreadsheet or a checklist or anything to help you not feel so lost. Okay, As, are any of y'all, have you met or has someone when you were onboarded talked to you about the transaction coordinating department with Keller Williams? Okay, that's Brenda. So if you get something, then uh, if you, you pay for that, we're going to help you if you don't want to pay for it. But again, remember what I said is you want to learn to leverage. In the very beginning, you may not be able to do that. So a lot of times if you're on a team, they have someone like Carrie or like I, we have another person on our team that just does that. And your team leader pays for that. Um, if you're in the individual agent, then you pay. It's like $199. Uh, a transact 195 a transaction is what it is to get that done and so you might want to visit with them and see exactly how that works and if you're interested in doing that and we can we can get that phone number for you if you want if you're interested in talking to them if you want to try one of them by yourself then we'll help you we'll answer questions and move you through that so you know what happens so those are the two options that you do have um, and they're they see those things anyway any questions about that part of it? Okay, Carrie. Um, so one of the things that we do in coaching is we, um, our agents, they can keep up with KW Bucks. So throughout the week, if they get a listing or they track their numbers or um, it's just something that holds them accountable and they get so many 
AW bucks for each each item or task that they do. So this is just a running total of some of the people um, in PC that have um, that have KW bucks from the. I think we started July first. Yeah. Um, agents tracking numbers. I go in once a week and look at if everybody's reported their numbers and what this is. We have, it goes back to accountability and staying organized. Um, we have a spreadsheet that has um, the year, a year's calendar, and it's broken down into 12 weeks, um, four 12 week sessions. And so we go in and we can see um, how many open houses you've done, how many listing appointments you've had, how many listings you've taken, closings. And what that spreadsheet does is it helps you know where you're at as far as your goals go. So if you set um, whatever your goals are that you set, if you're on week eight of week 12, you can see, oh, well, I'm not going to hit this goal or I'm not on track to hit this. So let me look at this spreadsheet and see what, what I've set for myself and where I have, um, what some of my weaknesses are. What do I need to work on to make sure I hit these goals? And then at the end of the 12 weeks, you can go in and see, um, for the full 12 weeks, let's say your goal was to get four listings and you went on eight listing appointments and you only got two listings. So the, there's a weakness that you could, you probably need to practice your listing presentation. Or if you didn't set a very high buyer contract, you weren't gonna work with a lot of buyers, but you exceeded that goal. You can see what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are and help you improve and just maintain a, a steady, steady pace seeing what what all you're doing and what you could do better i think one of the main things that we want to make sure you understand on here is that we ask you to keep your numbers but some people say well that's just me and doing that we're watching your numbers you know we're not doing this to beat you in the head with a stick we're doing this because my agreement with the market center and with you guys is that we're partnering up and we're going to help you become successful and so I can tell you to do your numbers, but if I don't ever check, if we don't know if you're doing your numbers or not, that's not, do, not doing either one of us any good. And um, so you can see there's some people that have been in here. Some of them just started. And so um, Mackenzie usually does hers when she's been, or I thought she did. Is she not putting her numbers in there? Because I looked at that and saw that across there. But no, like Christian, he's a newer agent. And then brand new. um, yeah, Tyler, he's just two weeks. And and he sent his numbers last two weeks and he's on this call. So there's well, a lot of Asa. That's funny. These down here, I watch very close. They're on my team. And when they don't have a little thing here, I'm going, what happened to them? You know, yeah. with this. Um, uh, I have their number set to where they have to turn them in Friday by Friday at five. And Asa, um, he, he forgot to do his numbers apparently, but he had a listing. <laughs> he's doing his open house stuff. So I need to text him and tell him let me get his numbers in there. His listing went under contract like in 24 hours. Him and Jenny both had one do that. Would y'all like to have something like that happen? A listing and for it to go under contract that quickly? Okay. Um, all right. I think you talked a little bit about this when you were saying what we were doing here. This just shows you how we track the stuff. Yeah. So this is um, on this one, everybody. I'm gonna, okay, Tyler, he's on this call. So I'm going to pick on him. Um, his uh -huh. close. Goal. He set his goals to close four for the this quarter. And I know he's a new agent. So when I talked to him, I said, when you're setting your goals, um, it'll ask you how many weeks you're going to work in this 12 weeks. I said, well, there's only eight weeks left. So don't put 12. And it'll, it'll um, pick, set your goals for how many weeks you're going to work. And you fill it out. It gives you numbers. So his, um, looks like he's going to close four deals and um, he split it to three buyers and one listing. So his goal is to get three buyers and one listing in the, the rest of the 12 weeks that we're in. That's his goal. And so by him tracking his numbers, he can see how close he is to that goal. I'll go in and see um, that he has a buyer contract that he wrote or he has a listing. Um, so it'll help us. It helps me help the agent stay accountable and then it helps us just see where there is room for improvement, what strengths are, weaknesses, and all that good stuff. Okay. 
we're going to show you and some of y'all i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because i've talked to you individually but y'all need a board you need to see because what what you talk about like an ignite i don't think any of y'all have maybe taken ignite i'm gonna pull you back up so i can see your faces here um but you've got a big why what is it and what you're going to learn in here is we want you to go from e an entrepreneur most of you say i want to be an entrepreneur but we want you to go from entrepreneur to being purposeful so you can live intentionally what is it you're doing what is that big wine how are you going to get there and you can see just me entrepreneur is me nobody else has anything to do with it it's what i put into it it's my commitment it's what i'm going to work for but i have help and i have whys all over the place underneath that is jimmy who is my husband this is my family this is my grandchildren all out here those are my whys and even when I started as a mother, a young mother with four children, a husband and a family, Jimmy paid all the bills. But what I wanted to do was to make a difference in the quality of life that we lived. I wanted to be able to do more. I didn't want to just pay the bills. So I don't know what your why is. I don't know what you're doing this for. But what I wanted to do were things like, you know, Jimmy had a birthday. This was years into it. And he had talked about years wanting a red Corvette with a black convertible top. And so I went out because I could and bought him a red Corvette with a black uh, convertible top, pulled it into the garage and let him go out to get something out of the freezer. And he went, oh my gosh, is that mine? And he, he says things that make me happy. Like, don't, I have to be careful what I tell Marcella that I want. Don't, didn't that sound fun to you guys to have somebody in your life to be able to do those kind of things for, you know, I paid for college for the kids out of selling houses. They didn't have a loan. They didn't have to pay college off. I sent them on honeymoons to Paris, to Costa Rica, to Jamaica. You know, those are the kind of things we went, when Joshua graduated from college, we all took a European cruise, the family together. That's what I wanted to do. You know, my first sale that I had, I made $2,500. I remember it, I was in DeWitt, Arkansas. And I, I thought $2,500. And with that sale, I picked up the phone, bag phone then, called Jimmy and said, pack the kids, we're going to Florida. And we went to Disney World with that $2,500. My kids knew from an early point that when mother worked, we played. And so, it, you know, I didn't miss ball games. Plan your schedule, just like Landon said in the very beginning, like Tyler, like you guys were talking about, plan your schedule so that you know, know why you're doing this because guys, I can promise you, there will be a point in this career that you're going, I don't know if I can do it. you know. And if you don't have the right coach, if you don't have the right mentor in anything in life, if this is not what you do and you do something else, get around someone that knows how to do it and say, will you teach me, can I watch you? I'll pay you, take them to lunch and pay for lunch. Learn what they're doing to be successful and believe in yourself. So uh, this is my, my team down here and that's my entrepreneur. And then you guys, I need to go back now and add a place on here for productivity coach. This was done before I went back into productivity coaching. Y'all are part of being purposeful with what I'm doing part of building that legacy that I want to leave. I told you a few minutes ago, I had an agent that had been in my productivity coaching that called and referred someone to me to put on my team. That's, you know, that's about as good as it gets when somebody wants someone coming in to be on my team because they know they're going to learn. So those are the kind of things that you need to figure out. Uh, what are you going to do with this business? And I don't know if any of you have been in here for a while and just didn't. Catherine, you've been you've been licensed. Are you brand new or you've been licensed for a while? Brand new. I'm brand new. Brand okay. new. Okay. Is there someone else on here that has not? No, I think this is all brand new people that no one's been licensed for a while. That was on there. We've got. I might be wrong, um, and I know Link doesn't have a mic. I want to say that he's been. A, an agent for at least a few months. I'm not sure. I think I saw that on a list. I guess Link, it, Link and I were new agents almost a year ago. A year ago. Okay. Almost. So I Tyler, I didn't. I think we're both at like 11 months. See, so. I didn't realize that you were had been in here for a while either. So we can look back at you at this point as we're talking about it for those 11 months. Were you part time? Were you wondering what to do? 
what was going on in your mind? Did you feel like this is not working? Those kind of things. Um, I think post or, or pre pandemic, I was trying to do it full time and I went to ignite twice. Um, I ended up having one, uh, land deal. And I also did, uh, I did kind of like one of those showing deals where I showed, I showed, I showed, um, for an agent, I showed about 20 properties and that's all I did on that kind of deal. But, and then the pandemic hit and then I kind of just kind of backed off, um, which that was a big mistake, but, um, and then I'm jump, jumping right back in right now. Okay. Well, I love it. Yes. And you are jumping in and, and since you've talked to me and since we started doing this, you've been at everything you could be at to be possible for that. That's what's going to make a difference guys. It's mindset. A big part of what you're going to do in this is your mindset believing that you can do it and then get that roadmap and go for it. So I'm glad you're in here because we're going to cap and you're going to have a story. Okay. All right. Um, this is the schedule that we've got just so uh, most of y'all probably know this. I probably need to put it on there for myself uh, <laughs> at this point, but on Mondays, those are really your catch up days, catch up from the weekend and organize your schedule. This is also in PC agent coaching. So you, this schedule is in there where you guys can go back and look at it. Tuesdays, uh, there are two coaching sessions on Tuesday. Foundation is 10 to 11.30, new agents with y'all. And then momentum is 1.30 to three. If you're in foundation, you can still come to momentum. I don't care. The more you get in, you may hear something at this one that you didn't hear before. And if you're in momentum, if you're going to the other one, what I don't want you to do is consider yourself out of this one until you complete. And I'm going to go through some things because this is your basics. You need these things to get your business going. So two different sessions that's in there and then track your numbers every day. That's really, really important. On Wednesday is when we have Jody Hendricks does, um, contracts. He teaches contracts. He's our principal broker. If you've not met him from 1 30 to three and um, it's on the first and second Wednesday. And then on Thursdays is when I do one-on-one. -on -one. So once you get three contracts under your belt, you'll get with Carrie and we'll set up a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one with me where we'll have a prep form and we'll go through some of these things a little bit later and it becomes a little bit more intense as far as your accountability and your coaching. And then on Friday is script every day. I didn't mention this, but every day from 8.30 to 9, I challenge you guys, find someone to script practice with. You may think that sounds really, really funny, but even going over your listing presentation, reading it, just reading the scripts, if you just read it to yourself, it will make a difference. And then from 9 to 11, I want you lead generating. A few minutes ago when I said, what is the one thing you can do such as by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. You know, everything you said was true. But lead generation, if you don't lead generate in this business, you might as well not be in it. That doesn't mean you have to cold call every day, but it does mean you have to be asking X amount of people, whatever your plan is, whatever you set in there, you've got to find, if you're gonna have four listings, you gotta figure out how you're gonna get those four listings and people are not gonna pick up the phone. And I wish this would happen, but they're not. Call and go, hey, come list my house. Very seldom does that happen. Um, Okay, the four sessions you're going to have, this one is goal setting systems and basic command. And I think we're going to move basic command down to contract to close because I've got a full meeting thing getting through all these things that we're doing with you. Um, so we're going to move that, that at that point. If you have questions about command in between now and that fourth week, then Carrie's available to answer those questions for you. Then once we get through, we'll go back and repeat those. So if you need to know something else and ask more questions about goal setting, come back to that one the first week, uh, the first Tuesday of the month. And then sellers, I'll go over the listing presentation, things you need to do, working with them. On the second one, I'll go over working with buyers. And then your contract to close and your basic command with your CRM and stuff will be on that fourth week. Um, these are the basics. If you've got a great listing presentation, if you've got a great buyer's presentation, if you know the direction that you're going and you've got a plan, a roadmap to go that direction, and then you know what to do when you have that, that seller, uh, that contract to close from the time you take that exclusive listing contract or for the time you write that seller, that buyer's contract, uh, if you know what to do and how to get through those, or you pay someone. I would suggest that you learn what to do because when you're paying somebody to do something, you want to know that they're doing it correct. 
So whether you do it or not, you need those systems in place where you can ask questions and know the right questions to ask to make sure that your business is going in the right direction. Um, criteria for getting out of foundation coaching. These are the things, this is my expectations uh, for you to be able to say, I don't have to come back to these four classes. So we will, you're in here and as a new agent, I'm gonna expect all these things to be completed before you, it'll encourage you to do it so you don't hear the same thing over and over again. Because if you're not doing them, you're not gonna hit your goals at that point. A minimum of 100 people in your database or your CRM, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but Command has a database. Carrie, I'll show you how to put those in that fourth week. Goals, set and track your numbers. We've already talked about that. We're gonna go into that a little bit more. Buyer presentation to me, to Carrie, to someone that we have as a mentor. I'm gonna need someone to say, you've done that. Uh, your listing presentation, you're gonna, we need to hear you. And it may be that we take a week in uh, momentum and I say, okay, Landon, let's hear your listing presentation. As far as I'm concerned, when you're not coming to this, you should be ready to present that listing presentation at any point. Don't wanna scare you guys off. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are y'all in agreement with me that you need to understand these things? Yes, okay. And then weekly attendance at coaching. You need to be, you, we need to know why you're not here. This is important. This is where you're building that business that's worth having, that legacy worth leaving. Um, and then group script and then learn how to set up campaigns and command. We'll show you how to do that. That's where you're gonna get your leads from. Carrie and I were a little skeptical when we started that, but we've been amazed at when we advertise a listing in there, all the leads that come back with emails and phone numbers. So another way for you to get business. Um, I think we spend, Carrie, what is an average you're putting in there for me, like $20 or something a, month, a week, or what are you doing it for? I do, for each listing I advertise, I usually do $20 for 10 days. And we're and she's getting 50 plus leads off of all of them. So that's a lot. That's a lot, you guys. And then you've got to put it in there. So you might even find an agent that's a friend of yours and say, hey, can I run your house? Because as a listing agent, I want my listing sold. So there are agents that, you know, get their permission, say, could I run a campaign on your listing and get the leads? You know, might even pay them a referral for that. Most agents are not going to ask for referral. You might offer it just in the very beginning and we'll help you get those things set up and then attend uh, the lead generating for 10 hours. So that's two hours, five days a week, lead generates somehow. That doesn't mean sitting there looking at your phone, looking at social media. You know, you can send text out because bold, they're counting uh, text, social media, those kind of things now because it's big. I mean, that's a huge percentage of what our business is today. Then you're gonna set your 135, your 411, and your 12 week year. When you saw those lists a few minutes ago that said these agents haven't set their goals, they don't have a 135 in there, a 411, or 12 week year. We're gonna show you pictures of those as we go through this. A 135 means that you can set that on any task that you're gonna accomplish. So if you want a 135 on uh, listings, then you can say your one goal is to get, you know, five listings this, this month is what I'm gonna go with that. And then you set priorities. You have three priorities underneath that. Priority number one may be calling for sell by owners. Priority number two may be calling expires. Priority number three will be working with pulling sellers out open houses. And then your strategies of how you're gonna do those things. You get five of those underneath each one of those. Then you've got a business plan for how you're gonna accomplish that one goal that's in there, that big rock. Have you seen the illustrations where you've got this jar and they talk about putting, they've got gravel and sand and water and big rocks all sitting at the side. And if you put the gravel and the water and the sand in before you put the big rocks, everything won't fit into that jar. But if you put your big rocks in there first, then all the gravel, all the sand, all the water will fit into that jar. So what I'm saying to you guys is figure out what your big rocks are. What is something, what is the one thing you're gonna be able to do such as by doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. And then your 411, we're gonna show you where to get those, but your 411 is you have got one goal, you've got one big rock that's in there, or you can have several, this goal to make this like mine was to have a different quality of life. And then I'm gonna schedule those things down in one month and four weeks. And your 411 can change. Your, your big rock probably is what you're gonna do this year or this 12 weeks is how we like to set that. So what do you wanna accomplish? What's the big thing 
that if you look back over these last 12 weeks, you would be proud of yourself that you accomplished that. What is that big rock? And then each month in there, what are you going to do to accomplish that for those 12 weeks? And then each week, and as you move from this month to the next month, those weekly things may change because what you did last month on those four weeks may not be working. So you've got to look at your 411. You've got to look at, again, that's part of your plan. And then your 12 week, and we're going to show you how you set those 12 week goals if you've not done that. And because that, um, that 135 she's talking about in your box um, account, I, I'm almost positive that it's titled GPS. It may have 135 on there as well, but 135 and GPS, that's the same thing. Yes. Um, okay. And then one completed transaction. This is the criteria to get out of here. I want you to have one completed transaction. Doesn't mean you can't go to the other ones, but we're going to have this this is a smaller group. This is where we can ask questions. There's no dumb questions. Sometimes when you get there and people are saying, I've done, just like I talked to Caden yesterday. I'm very proud of him. He set a goal to have four uh, listings that close. He's got four under contract right now already for this 12 weeks. And so those are the kind of things that I like to hear. But he, he talks, we talk the same talk as we talk with you, but it's just a little bit different when you're in the very beginning and you're asking questions that are different when you start having those closings and those contracts uh, that are going under contract. Okay, so the other thing that we do is a one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's gonna be on the first and third Thursdays. We may reroute those things, change that up. Right now, that's where we're putting it. So once you have three contracts, three closed transactions, then you qualify for a 30-minute call with me uh, you've got to put your, this is how you qualify. So it's not just the close. You have to have your numbers and your KW bucks posted weekly. We'll go back and look and it doesn't matter what happened. If you haven't been doing that and you're on here, what you do from today forward is what makes a difference. Attendance at group coaching, I put at least 80% because I understand somebody could be sick. You've got things happening. So we're not going to penalize you if you miss. I just think 80% is unless we have it like, I think we've got a conflict with Bold with some people this afternoon. Um, and I didn't realize they were pushing that this time. They pushed it last time in there. Usually we'll make some kind of concession when we've got Bold and it's on a day that it conflicts with what our group coaching is. So the closed transactions, your goals have to be in your box, the row one, 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 three, five in your G or your GPS on target to hit your goals or at least understand your gap. You know, we don't always hit our goal you know, usually it's because we have not been realistic with how much we're really going to work or we've not been committed. So it is not my fault. And I'm going to pull you guys up because I want you to understand this. This is something I say a lot. It is not my fault when you don't hit your goals. Whose fault is it? Yes. And you have to accept responsibility because when you don't accept responsibility, you lose control. Now, it is my fault if you're not successful because number one, if I say to you, Lyndon, on a, on a scale of one to 10, how accountable do you want me to hold you? And so you say three and we set your goals for three, then they're going to be different than if I say, Tyler, how accountable and you say a 10, I'm going to be on Tyler all the time. You don't have your goals in there. You don't, it's going to be, he's going to go, man, I wish you would leave me alone a little while. I mean, I had a coach, I seriously said these things. I don't want to go to coaching right now. I'm busy doing this other stuff and I don't have those numbers that she wants me to have. Guys, that's what we do. We make it, you've got to get them. If you say you want to do this, the next 12 weeks, change it, but don't quit. You never fail until you quit. So these goals are serious. They're building your life. They're changing what you do. So think about them. Take some time, go set out, a whole day somewhere, go to the park, take your, your stuff with you where you can clear your mind, rent a room, go to Big Cedar and enjoy yourself. But Jimmy and I at the first of the year before all this hit, every year we would go at the end of the year when people say they're doing Christmas is when Christmas was over, those kind of things we would head or even before Christmas sometime, we would head Big Cedar, we've been to Gulf Shores and the two of us would sit down and set, what are we gonna accomplish this year? What would that look like? Your goals really need to be set back in October for the first of the year. So we went over what we had set at that point, but make it an occasion. Do something special for yourself. It's special. You're building your life. It's what you're doing. 
So this is what happens when I talk about you capping. Um, uh oh, let me go back. I was trying to get rid of y'all. I'm looking at your faces and I can't see my slide here. So a new cap is 14,000. If you just joined, your cap is 14,000 and you pay a royalty of $3,000. So if your average sales price is 200,000, you multiply that times 3% because that's one side of transaction. If you have the list and you have the sale, then it's two transactions, not 6%, it's three on each side. So $6,000 on a 200,000 is your average sales price commission. So your average commission, you take that, the 6,000 times 30%, which is your company dollar. So a brand new agent is put on a 60-40, 30% goes to your company dollar, which means you're paying that to Keller Williams and they're keeping up with it. And when you've paid them through that 30%, $14,000, you are now on 100%. Pay that and your royalty. So your average commission again times 6%, which is your royalty, is 360. So if you go down below that and look, your cap is 14,000, 1,800 was 30% times $6,000, 1,800 went against your company dollar, which another thing, Carrie and I will be keeping up with your company dollar on a monthly basis, knowing where you are and keeping up because my goal is to have uh, at least 10 cappers by the end of the year. So I'm gonna have to push somebody in here. I need to know who wants to be one of those 10 people that we're gonna push to have 10 cappers so that you have $14,000 and you're on 100% by the time we start the beginning of next year. So you take that 14,000 and you divide it by that 1,800 that was up here. That means you've got to do on a normal commission split. Now, if you're on a team, it's a little bit different than this. On a normal commission split, 7.78 transactions based on these numbers. Then you take the 3,000 and that's 360 divided into that. So it's 8.3. So really at about eight transactions, you've paid everything off. If your average sales price is 200,000, you're now at 100%. So I'm gonna bring you guys down and look, are there any questions on this? Had you understood this before? Has anyone gone over this with you? Yes, I went over this in coaching before. But this is really important, brand new that you understand. Because if you don't know what your checks look like and you don't know where you are, you're not gonna know what happens if it gets toward the end of the year and you only need $1,000 and you don't know it. I mean, mentally it makes you work harder. Even if you're not on the 100% for very many months, you need to know where you are and your goal needs to be to cap this first year in your business. Or at least now like Tyler and Link starting, so this next year, you want to cap quick. So we've got to get you into capping. Uh, and then you can go, look, the first year, the pandemic hit. We can blame 2020 for a lot of things, can't we? Yes, we can do that. So no questions on that. All right. So uh, again, we're going to have Power Day. Do most of you realize that we've set this for Thursday? That's when you're going to prospect all day long from 8 to 4.30. So this is the schedule for Power Day that we've got. I put this out there several different times. Script and role play with somebody mentally repair. Go over your scripts with yourself. Talk to your telephone if you have to that has grows green hair and bug eyes and say you're not going to scare me today. I'm going to do this. I'm on a roll. From 9 to 12 you're going to prospect. You're going to call your centers of influence. Your for sale by owners your expires. Any Y'all may not have a lot of past clients. Call your, your centers of influence. Skip that when you'll have that next time. And then social media. You're going to get on there and tell them you're in a contest. Um, 12 to 1 is neighbor. It's online. So you go to uh, neighborhood market and uh, neighborhood is what it is in Facebook and the link is in there. So if you want to learn what our uh, association is doing, what the updates are, they're having really good speakers, go in there and join that from 12 to 1 at 1. Go back at session 2 and it's power prospecting 4, 30, 4 to 4.30 is final reporting. And at five o'clock, we're gonna have an announcement of our winners. And today we're gonna to be announcing, we've got a couple of lenders coming on with some things that they're gonna give you in order to win something with this uh, contest. And then block off August 6th, make arrangements, be available. Get, if you don't come, if you don't try, you're not gonna, there is no try. Let me take that back, I messed up. There is no try. If you don't come and commit and do this, you've lost. This is, this is again, you have a, a choice, so choose success. In the folder in your PC agents under Power Day, there's a folder, and this is just a simple, I don't care how you change it, this is a Word document, so change the words in there. I wanted to give you something to go by, so if you're going to go out and knock on doors, then you can make this your own, 
we've got this in there and I'm going to show you how you get your QR code. I did that the other day, but I want to make sure you got that. We are going to have some production in this business. If you're not already in Keller Williams in the system at this point, then you can put something else on there or go with someone else and be a part of this and learn when they're going out there. Find someone to go knock on doors with you. Um, the one little block up there, I've got how, happy house hunting. A lot of times I sign my emails when I send them out to people, happy house hunting, because that feels happy to me. You don't have to do that. You can put something else up there. Everything is changeable. The market is hot. And I think you need to put something in there that you're going to hand out on doors. This, it's definitely a great time to buy or sell in real estate. Interest rates have hit an all time low. We haven't seen a rate lower than 3% in 50 years. Just hit it last week. That's the first time we did that. I'll be happy to sit down with you. You're telling those people this on a Zoom. You're leaving this. You can have a Zoom meeting with them. There's reason people aren't listening today. Number one, they're afraid of what's happening. Like you said, Tyler, we didn't know what was what COVID was. So we took a back seat and we weren't working during that time. Now we're learning that if we social distance, if we stay away from people at least six feet, or we wear a mask, that generally we are protected. And I say generally because your health does make a difference to me. And I'm not sure you hear so many things, but that's what doctors are saying today. Even on an appointment, you need to wear your mask when you're talking. If you need to take the mask off, you need to social distance at least six feet. That should not insult anyone that you're doing that. You are being, um, I think you are doing that for them as much as you are from yourself. So you need a mask. If you're getting out, you need the gloves. Keep some in your car. If you're opening things, throw the gloves away. Just be cautious. Don't be like me the other day and I pumped gas, didn't have a glove, one of those plastic gloves with me. So I got out there and I think that's okay because I got hand sanitizer in my car. I was going to do that. Hadn't eaten anything and I had crackers in there. So I reach over without hand sanitizer, eat that whole thing of crackers and realize I pumped my gas where somebody else had a hold of that. This is what the news media does to us. Uh, I haven't died yet, but I don't plan on doing that again. I mean, I just think we need to be careful with things like that. Y'all should have seen me. I was going, okay, I'll wash this down with tea. And then I realized, oh my gosh, now I'm just washing all that stuff inside. <laughs> so news media will scare you and fear is not. Fear will clobber your faith. Just do what's right in the very beginning and you don't have to be afraid. We're going to show you what you get. Get your QR code. Also, for my team, we've got a watermark on here. Last night, I meant to tell Carrie because we didn't tell Madeline to take the watermark off for PC. So I went in and took the watermark. This is just Keller Williams. So we've got this in your box. So you're, if you're gonna walk the streets and you just want Benton County, then you can pull this up and just <clears throat> take this one and put it on there. Do all of you know how to pull something up, screen print and then cut it off so you can use it? Yes, Landon, I can see you have a question. Is this on mykw.com? This no, group. this is something we created for you in coaching. So when you go into box and PC coaching, if you go into PC coaching, there's a file called Power Day. This is in there. <clears throat> so this is in there, but you can change the grid that the uh, stats that we've got down there. So you can do Bentonville. You can do, I've got one in there for Bella Vista. We've got Rogers. We've got Benton County. We've got Springdale. We've got Washington County. So you've got a multiple of choices that you can go to. So if you're going to Centerton to just walk the streets out there, you want to pull the city of Centerton and what's happening in there. Y'all can see this right here. This one was um, Bentonville. And honestly, Carrie, they finished this late. I went in there late last night to look at this. I went in to check these stats because I couldn't believe them myself. If you look at Bentonville between zero and 99, there are no active listings, guys. None. Well, and it's been yes. like that for like three or four months. When I, None. When I it's and crazy. one sold in the last 90 days, so it's probably something somebody found and called someone and put it in as sold before print, something like that. Look at 150 to 199, I mean, 100 to 149, zero. So I challenge you, even if this is not the area, get in there. I put that in there for you. All these things are updated as of the end of July. So this is what's happening, and this is your absorption rate that we've talked about. Matter of fact, I've got this a little bit bigger on the next slide so you can see that. So this is what the girls have done for you. This is part of your benefit with coaching. Do you have any questions on this? This, this whole slide's on box, right? I do what now, Landon? This whole slide's on box, correct? Yes. yes, this is in box PC coaching and I pulled those into Power Day this time. 
it will be it's uh, it's in market stats too but i put everything in power day so you don't have to look for it for what we're doing okay you can probably it's in all caps you can go to the search bar and just type in july market stats in all caps and it should pull it up okay if you've got questions then you can call one of us and we can help you this is where you find we're almost out of time we're not going to get through the other systems because of this doing this i'm going to have to rearrange the schedule i can tell because has this been helpful to y'all we're not going to have this every time but has this been helpful so that you know I don't want to speed through these things because I think you need to understand these basic things and where we are. So um, we may have to change the schedule on this. Another thing is I may have to change the Tuesday mornings um, to another afternoon because of what we're doing with prospecting and things like that. I'm going to leave them here for right now and we'll let you know. Um, but until you get some of these basic things down you need this down in that first month before you really hit that stuff and know what you're doing to prospect you know people can say you got to prospect you got a lead gen but what if you get a listing i mean what if you get an appointment then you don't know what the heck to do with it so you've got to understand that call me and we'll make sure you know what to do okay so this you go to my kw you go to the home button and then you see here it says agent website admin you click that and then when you click that, this is going to pop up. Go down to 4.0, add listing, IDX. And I put this slide in there last night, these sections. Uh, it was like 1 o'clock when I quit doing this last night. So I'm thinking where I put it. Um, I'll go look and see, and then I'll let you all know that. Unless I put it on here, I tried to go back and, and tell you where I put everything. But you click this one. And once you do that, this pops up. And here you can do like a mobile URL. So if they want to send them there and you want to, if you want to put this as a hyperlink, copy a link and say in your email signature, for instance, in your email signature, put this link in there and say, click here for all Northwest Arkansas MLS. Enter here to get all Northwest Arkansas, MLS. whatever you want to say, put that in your email. When they click there, it will take them to your app that's in there. So you need everything set up on there. Or you can copy this image. The reason I put this image on there for our flyer is you couldn't use a URL because actually it's not, you're handing out a piece of paper. So anything that's paper, we want them to be able to make it digital or they're just going to throw it away. So they can take their phone, they can do the URL. Uh, on a paper, they can't click a URL. It'll take them to, the, to uh, your app. Okay, two books I wanna recommend, and my team has just went through these again. I think it makes a huge difference, especially with the pandemic. Uh, the first one is Seven Levels of Communication. This is a book built on building your business by referrals. Uh, Michael Mayer, is, it's good, it's an easy read. If you've not read it, I suggest that you go and get it. And then the second one is Miracle Morning, and it's a follow-up, it's a sequel to Seven Levels, and it's your, what you're gonna do in the morning time to get you started. It's got an acronym in there called SAVERS. Not gonna go into it really fast. And we are at three minutes till. Hey, you're um, until 11.30, Marcella. Do what? It's 10 to 11.30. Oh, I had 11 on here. We are moving through this thing, yes. Y'all are probably, well, thank you. See how she keeps me in order here? Me. All right. I found your QR code that Marcella was talking about. It's in Box and it's in the Power Day folder as well. So if you go into Box, just click on Power Day and then you'll have the market stats in that okay, folder. Okay, I did put it in there. Okay. I was thinking I put everything in that one folder this time. Uh, and actually, we can leave it in there. It'll be other places. But if you want to have a Power Day experience, whatever, everything is there for you to go walk the streets. So that's a we can call power day, whatever we want to call it at this point. Okay, on your phone, whoops, let me go back. I'm trying to get rid of y'all's little faces again. On your phone, if you will download uh, the app to Box and put it on your phone and then you'll be able to save your contracts, everything you've got with that. And so Box.com and most of you, is there anyone on here, speak up, um, is there anyone here that's not on box yet? I don't think Catherine is. Okay, Catherine, you might want to set up a time and 
get with Carrie and let her walk you through a couple of these okay. basic things instead of you trying to find that out. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. That would be great. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Like okay. All right. And then uh, this is what it looks like when you go in there. You've got the app on your phone and this is on your computer. You're going to have your email address in there and then it's going to ask you for your password and it's going to take you in. I've been using Box since 2011. It's just, it's where we keep everything. And so what you have on your Box account is your personal stuff. So you can set up files in there for taxes. You know, if you're setting up, keeping things for your taxes, scan those things, put them in there. You'll have them. If you go to your accountant, you can just pull it up right there, send it to him. It's all available to you. So I can't see, just because I'm sending you into Box, the only thing I can see that you see is things that we have collaborated with you. So if you collaborate something with me, I can see it too, and you can see it, but Carrie can't see it. So this is your file unless you share it with someone else, just like a Google file, okay? This is what it looks like uh, when you pull it up and you've got things in there. So this is mine. I've got a lot of different things. See, I've got Marcella's business in there. Uh, you can't see that. What you can see is 2020 PC agent when you open that up. All these other things, see I've got the Hagen group in there. All of my team can see that. And then I've also got a PC coaching staff. You can't see that. I put all the little extras and things that I need to pull over for you, things that I've prepared, the PowerPoints, those kind of things go in there because it would just clutter your file for you to have all those things in there. So make this yours. Uh, and then if you open PC agent, these are things you're gonna have in there. You've got extras, so we will put things in there. Right now you've got power day that's not showing up on here, working with buyers, working with sellers. So it's close. Working with buyers, you're going to have your buyer presentation. Sellers, you're going to have your seller's presentation. Setting your goals, you're going to have things that you need to set your goals. If you want to know what the schedules are, it's going to be in coaching schedules. And then uh, working with sellers, if you open that up, you can see the difference here. It says you went from all files to PC agent to working with sellers. This says you're in working with sellers now. And these are the things that are in working with sellers. There you're gonna have your net sheet. You're gonna have your pre-listing packet. So pre-listing packet means if you want to personalize this, we'll go through some of this, but if you wanna personalize that pre-listing packet, take it out with you in a nice little folder. You can go to um, uh, Supply Store and they've got those. I think I bought one at uh, Office Depot pay $20 for 50 of those little clear with sleeves. It just looks better. And then you put a, a page on it that's branding yourself and put information in there about pre-listing, what's important about pricing your property right. You may want to change it and put something in there about uh, COVID and what the market's doing. There's all kinds of things that are different than what's in here, but this will give you ideas to fill it up to give value that's in there. Never ever go, ever go on a listing presentation without a seller's net sheet. We'll go through that. This is something that we did in the spring and I need to go back into keeping current matters and pull one for summer. We'll put those in there or you can edit it, uh, your housing market. So those, I pay for those things and I give them to you for free. Uh, and then I'm gonna move past this. Oh, I know what I want to show you on here. If you go over here and you hit this little thing on the side, then you can rename a folder, you can download a folder, you can move or copy it. So if you've got something that you've set up that we can't see necessarily and you wanna move it out of, of this in your own folders, then you can move something out of here and put it into yours. If you wanna trash a folder, don't trash anything in PC, go trash your own stuff. If you wanna add a collaborator, this is where you did it, where you do that. If you have loaded something onto your laptop or your computer and you wanna put it in box, you go to this over here, and hit upload. If you're in your own and you want to have my listings, my current listings, then you'll go in here. Here's where you create a new folder, name it my current listings or whatever you want to. Then you put your listings as you, you start getting those into that folder. It's a file cabinet for you on the go. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, the other thing, if you go over here where your little face is up here, and you click on that, this drops down, you can create your profile, this is account settings. What I wanted to show you here was apps. So this is where you can set up the different apps where that if you're in, um, if you're into uh, Word document, for instance, for some reason, um, Excel doesn't do this, but Word, PowerPoint, you can save everything 
from an app if you sync Box to your computer or your laptop. So go in there, it'll have Box for Office. So Microsoft and all those things, download that and upload it onto your computer and you'll be able to sync right from PowerPoint. And Carrie has told you before, uh, like if I'm working on a PowerPoint, I can just hit upload and it'll take it me into where the upload is and I can save it right then. Or if it's already in there, then you can just uh, work on it online and it makes changes immediately. Okay, any questions about Box? Here's another thing where, okay, this actually is a Word document. I was wondering if I had put this in here and I thought I was giving your schedule. So this says where it says view and box, then this Word document, I click this and it's already in there. It will update it from whatever I'm working on. It's just showing you where those things are. Okay, setting your goals. Be sure your goals are your goals. People that set their goals think that they should have these goals rather than what they truly want for themselves. And we've talked about that earlier today. They've got to be your goals. It can't be about, don't set a goal saying, I want to make $100,000 this year. You won't do it. Because if I use that financial thermostat and I go back and I say, how much money have you ever made in a year? And you tell me you've made $30,000. If you jump from, or you say, I want to make 50. So if you tell me you want to make 100,000, and we're in a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to go, Tyler, how much money have you ever made? Would you, no, first of all, I say, would you be satisfied when you say 100 with 75? Well, yeah, I'd like 75. What does that tell me? Would you be satisfied with 50? Mm, maybe. It tells me your thermostat's getting a little bit different there. And then I say, how much money have you ever made? And the most shocking thing to me, and I don't think that a coach or a parent should ever be shocked with something somebody says, one guy said $10,000 is the most he'd ever made. And I tried to very, very common. I went, you understand I said a year and cause I'm thinking, and he said, yeah, that's the most money I've ever made in a year. Well, he was young and he was just getting out of college and he had a part-time job at Lowe's. And so, but still that's the most money he's ever made. And for him to say, I want to go from making $10,000 a year to a hundred thousand dollars a year is going to change everything in his demeanor. Everything he does has to change. And so I don't care as long as he understands that it's not a piece of cake, it's, it's not a cake walk or whatever you want to do. It's no, there's no free lunch. You've got to work on this. No magic pills. You can't go from 10,000 to 100,000 without working, without being committed and without having a plan. And I think Landa said it in the very beginning, consistency makes a huge difference. And sometimes I've heard Gary and things that he said before, when he talks about agents that don't make it in this business, it's because they're looking for that new shiny object. You know, it can't be just about the basics, the things that I'm talking to you. It's got to be something else that's in there. I'm going to buy all these leads over here and I'm going to pay for these leads and I'm going to pay $1,000 a month. And, and then you don't know how to work the leads and then they're not converting. And then you go, these leads are crap. And they're not. It's just that you're not working the leads. So check something out. Red, red light, green light. If you buy something, try it out for at least six months before you said it doesn't work, before you just throw it away. So can you really afford to spend $1,000? You need to know because you need to work it like it's going to work for you. And if you just because it doesn't work the first week, the second week, because it doesn't work the first month does not mean that it's not going to work. You need to figure out whatever it is that you bought. How can I make this work for me? Don't let your families, your colleagues, society, don't let them set your goals. Don't let me set your goals. You know, I had somebody that joined that had, was on a team and they decided to get off by themselves and they call to talk to me about coaching and they said, I don't want to be pushed. My goals cannot be your goals. If you want to do one deal a month, then we're going to set your goals up so you can do one deal a month. Because if, if your mindset says, I don't want to be pushed and one deal is all, all I want to do, it does me no good to do that. It does me much better to get you trained to do what you want to do. And you say, I want to do more than that. I believe I can do it. It's easy to do this. Let's up my goals with that. If your written goals are not yours, your creative spirit will not work to produce them. You just won't do it. You just won't. It will frustrate you and it will give you the illusion of failure. I mean, it will disappoint you in yourself. Uh, you'll just say you don't want them anyway and you'll have an excuse. And I've done that about things. You know, I, I do that all the time about a diet. You know, I'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. I don't know if you guys ever do that. I'm gonna work out. Uh, you know, uh, tomorrow we had said on our team that we were going to do savers and we had this thing and we were going to do it. We we're going to start a habit. 
and I every day I thought I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start doing this, and I have not done it. And I use the excuses I'm working from eight to one o'clock in the morning on some of the things that we're doing right now for both of these, and I don't have time to do it. Well, I shouldn't say I'm going to do it if I don't have time to do it. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Don't make a commitment that's not in your heart that you believe that you can do when you're setting these goals. Smart goals, they need to be S is specific, so it needs to say something specific. You know, you can say, I'm gonna make $50,000 this year. I'm gonna make $100,000. How are you gonna do that? I'm gonna get up every day and I'm gonna clear my mind. I'm gonna exercise and then I'm gonna say my affirmation. So you're gonna go through all the things you're gonna do and then I'm gonna lead Jen for two hours every day for the next 66 days. That's how long it says it takes to create a habit. We're gonna see if that changes what you're gonna do. So measure, what gets measured gets improved. So look at your 401, look at your goals. I need to have four listings, how am I gonna get that? Is it attainable? Again, this is your commitment level. Is it relevant to what you're doing? And is it time sensitive? by the next 12 weeks, by this week, by this month. That's your SMART goals. Okay, this is where we set your goals. And a lot of you have looked at this, some of you have not. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. If you have questions, please answer it. But this is, in, this is where you set your goals. This is in PC coaching, so you'll see this. Everything in the green can be changed. This is based on what you put, fill in the blank on the green. Everything on the right-hand side is, is derived from what you fill out on that green column. So we're gonna focus on that green column mostly. So you've got three months. You heard Carrie say a while ago in the next 12 weeks, you don't have three months. Now you have, or you have eight weeks. You don't have 12 weeks. And it, even in this one with 12, they put 10 because they knew that they were gonna be off a couple of weeks, that they were going on vacation, something like that. So you need to think this through because if you're gonna miss a week, you're gonna have a gap in what you're trying to do. So is it for three months? Is it for two months? Whatever you're gonna do on there. Is it for 10 weeks? Is it for eight weeks? Is it for six weeks? Because whatever's said in here is gonna tell you over here what you need to do to accomplish those goals. Your commission, remember I told you, is 3% for one side. See, it says that. Your average commission split, if you're in productivity coaching, is gonna be 60%. We went over that. Your business plan for the next, and this should say three months, and for some reason I pulled the other one up, it calculates on three months anyway. Uh, your total gross commission income, if you wanna make $15,000, then that's what you put in there for the next 12 weeks, next uh, 12 weeks or three months, you wanna make $15,000, you put that in there. If you wanna make 20, you change that. If you wanna make five, then you put that in there. Whatever you wanna make goes in that slot. Your average sales price, and I lowered this a little for the person that I was working with, mainly because as a brand new agent, sometimes you don't sell enough of the higher end things to average out what you sell for the lower end. So these things, you can go into your goals and you can change them anytime you want to. This does not have to be something that's fixed and you've got to stick with it. If you see that you're selling $300,000 homes and you want to go in and change it, that's going to change your numbers. Right now, you don't have any idea what your average is. And so I want you to know what it is with a low average in here to be able to hit those numbers. The higher you go, the less you have to do. So I put 150 in here. This is the percentage of time that you're on the listing agent, that you're the listing agent uh, on a closing. So are you gonna be listing or buyer? Landon and I talked about this uh, yesterday. You don't know what you wanna be, you're brand new. And so I suggest that unless you've been hired on a team as just a buyer's agent, and we have some people in coaching that are on a team and they are only buyer's agent, that you get in here and you do a 50-50 and see what you like, learn to fish, take listings. And I, I told him yesterday, when you take a listing and that listing gets five or six or 10 offers on it, you're going to get paid. Only one of those other 10 agents are going to get paid. So that's the difference in being a buyer's agent and a listing agent. When your listing is priced right, it is going to sell. So in my mind, and I'm a high D, we're going to talk about personality profiling this afternoon, but I'm a high D and I am a listing agent. I do not want to spend time to show 20 houses to a buyer and then think I'm going to let y'all see my, I want to see your face because this is how I feel at that point. I went, what the heck? Buy one. I mean, we've looked at 20 properties. I've picked out what you want. A listing, you don't have to do those things with. Now, do I enjoy showing them? Yes, because there's nothing better than to feel like you have found that dream home for that couple and they're going to raise their family in here. That's a really great feeling to have. But in today's market, 
If they hem haw around, it is gone in 24 hours. They need to know what they're looking for, what they're willing to pay. So one of the closing techniques on that with a buyer is if it's listed for 150,000 and they say, I wanna pay 140,000. And then you say to them, you know, if somebody offered 145, are you gonna be sad that you lost that for 145? Well, yeah, so you're willing to pay 145 because this listing is not gonna be here. Are you willing to lose it for 5,000? Are you willing to lose it for 150,000? Because your payments are only gonna be X amount. If you don't know how to figure payments, that's another session that we need to, to get in there and show you a thing that Landon and I talked about yesterday, because you go backwards with a buyer. What kind of payment are you qualified for? And if they say, I'm renting, this is something that a lot of you are very young and you've got a lot of friends that are renting a house. And so if they're paying $1,000 in rent, figure that backwards and tell them, do you realize that you could buy a $200,000 house with no money down in an RD area? Guys, you've got to be equipped with this information to close the deals because a buyer does not care how much the house costs. They don't care. They care what that payment is. Interest rates are lower than they've ever been. They can buy more house today. And if you figure that payment, uh, the principal and interest, and then you need to figure out taxes and insurance in there. But if you can learn to figure that payment, that's gonna be really important for you closing a buyer. And then uh, we talk about the listing presentation, your value is what they're gonna be looking for. Let's drop down to this other thing here, the percentage of seller leads that convert to a listing. So now you've got a lead, you've been calling all these people, you've called 100 people and you've got 10 contacts and out of those 10 contacts, you've got one lead. And so the percentage of leads that convert to an appointment, and we put 50% in here because it's gonna take you a while to be able to get the scripts down and to understand what to say, to handle their objections or their conditions and not know what to say back to them. So I put 50%. Then the percentage of listing appointments that result in a listing, for example, 40 to 70 is what they said when I took this, gosh, I've used this thing for years and years and years. Um, I put 65%. Because if you get on that appointment, I'm going to give you the listing. If you get that appointment and then you go to the next one, we're giving you a listing that's proved. I've taken listings. You've got to get the scripts. You've got to understand what to say. But then you've got 90% down there that you're going to take. So the percentage of listings that close, once you get them in there, that's pricing it right. I don't care if, if that house is not selling, it's priced wrong. You know, we've got one on ours right now that we took over that, uh, it's been in there for long enough that it's not priced right. It's not the buyers in today's market are saying, we don't want it for this price. If it's priced right, it will sell. Uh, people go, well, what about location? It's got to be priced according to the location. It still goes back to the price. What about the, um, uh, how it's, it, you know, if it's trashed out, you know, what about how it looks, the amenities, the curb appeal, it, if it's priced right, it's gonna be according to all those things that are involved when you price it with that. And then the next section down there is selling your home to buyers. So we were in buyers and we were in sellers. The percentage of buyer leads that convert to an appointment, I put 80%. If you get a buyer lead today, if you follow up with them, you can convert them to an appointment. If you get into an open house and you get five good leads, you ought to be converting 80% of those. So eight out of 10, you ought to be able to convert into a buyer. And then the percentage of buyer appointments, you've got the appointment now, that result in a pending sale. I put 90%. If you get that buyer that they're really looking for a house, you get them pre-qualified and you know what they're looking for, you've pulled that backwards, you develop that relationship, they like you, they trust you, uh, they wanna do business with you, then it's gonna convert. And the percentage of pending sales that close, I put 90% because if you've got them pre-qualified, the only thing you're holding up for right now is that inspection and that appraisal and you've got to negotiate your way through those things. So if you fill these out according to what you think are your goals and how much money you wanna make and what you're willing to do with that, you look over here on the right-hand side. So in the next three months with the things, these statistics that we put in there, then you're gonna to need to have three buyer sales and three listings, just six in the next three months. The number of listings you need to take is three. Here's where this is that matches this over here. Let's go down here to the number of seller leads that you need. So we're talking about to get those three uh, listings over there. In three months, you need 14. That's all seller leads. You need five a month, just leads. 
that's just a little over one a week, two a week. It's not quite two a week, but they round it up. The number of appointments that you need. In the quarter, you need seven because of these statistics over here. In the month, you only need three appointments. So once you get these conversions down, and this is why I say you have to know your numbers. How many calls are you making? Out of those calls, how many contacts did you get? Out of those contacts that you made, how many leads did you get? Out of those leads, how many appointments did you set? And out of those appointments, how many contracts did you write? And out of those contracts that you wrote, how many closings and how much money did you make? You have to watch and track those things because if you have to call 100 people to get one contract, then when you've made 90 and you have that, you know you've only got 10 more and it helps you move forward with that. Any questions about that? Coming back to you, no, you got it. All right, this is also in there, the 66 day challenge. I just talked about this a few minutes ago. Uh, if there's something that a habit, like you wanna call every day from um, nine to 11, then put that as your habit and check it off. You can visually see this when you miss it. Doesn't mean you failed, you just haven't created that habit. So check it off. Any habit that you wanna do, this is in there where you can visually put it in front of you and you can check that off. Okay, this is what we talked about, your GPS. This is your goals, your priorities, your strategies, and those are in there. And I don't, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because we've talked about it. Do you understand? Has anybody got any questions on your GPS when you use that? Okay. Um, this again is your command portal that you go into. And um, if you're not in here, you need to be able to go in here and get into your command. Does everybody know how to get into command? Any questions on that? You got that? Okay, then we're gonna move on with that. Uh, I just spit this out to you a few minutes ago so we can move off of this slide. So if you don't know the things that you're tracking, these are the things that you need to track and we've got it in a grid for you. So you're gonna be able to know those. This is your tracking your numbers. Carrie, I'm gonna let you talk to them about this because you go in here, this is what you're looking for. Uh, this is really, really, really important. Figure it out, guys. If you don't know how, then make sure you get with me or Carrie, get these things done. So Carrie, I'm let you talk about tracking the numbers and what, how you're setting this thing up for them. Okay, um, this is the weekly tracker that we were talking about. And um, when you're in Box, you'll have your own folder and so you'll have your own tracker. And this is what I go in each week and see if everybody's got their numbers put in. Um, just a, a basic outline of it, that first yellow column on the left, that's goals. Um, that calculator that Marcella just went over for you setting your goals, you'll be able to pull a lot of those numbers and add to the spreadsheet. And then that second column, I know it's kind of small, but that middle one is your gap. And then the one on the right is your actual. So you'll go through and you'll enter in all, um, all your numbers for the week and it keeps a running total, a grand total of what you've done and it'll calculate that and it'll show you what your gap is. So you can see your goal, your gap and your actual. And you, um, that first section up on the top, um, first set of rows, that's contacts. So you can keep up with how many contacts you've made, whether it was center of influence at an open house, um, door knocking, anything like that. Um, out of those contacts, you can go down to the middle section, which is leads, and um, you can keep track of how many leads you got out of the different contacts you've made. Um, and this will help you know what your um, conversion ratio is after you go from contacts leads to, to how many listings you have, buyer contracts you've written. And so down at the bottom, that third section is the productivity. So that, that'll track how many hours have you worked, how many listing appointments did you go on? How many listings were, um, did you get? Buyer appointments, buyer contracts. It keeps up with everything you've done and it'll, it'll give you a running total. So it's easy for you to glance at and see, um, see where you're at as far as what your goals were that you set. And some of these goals, um, some of the sections may have zeros in it, um, like the open house. If your plan is not to do a bunch of open houses, then your goal on that probably isn't going to be that high. Now, if you did set um, one of your plans that you to hit your goal is to hold so many open houses, that's your goal. And you can you can look on week eight and 
see, oh, I've only held two houses open. So maybe I need to, I need to go find some, either go get some listings or ask somebody if I can hold their house open. Um, and you can keep track of that. So at the end of the 12 weeks, you can see what, what all your plan was to hit your goals. If you didn't hit your goals, this will show you what, what part that you didn't necessarily follow through on, or um, it'll show that if you've exceeded your goals, maybe you need to raise your goals and it'll, it'll help you figure out what needs to be done and how to track everything and your strengths and weaknesses. Okay, I'm going to encourage you guys to get in box, to get in these systems, look at tracking your numbers, look at your 135, your GPS, look at your 411, look at them first. If you have a question, then I would write down the questions that you have on each one of those, then get an appointment with Carrie so you can utilize her time and your time better than having to keep calling back. So we're going over all these things, look at them, see if you have any questions, and then let her know if you've got that. And if it's something that now she... Carrie can do a lot of the systems and stuff. She does not, and she very, she's very knowledgeable on the other, uh, just because she's been through a lot with me at this point. But if it's about your contracts or your classes and those kind of things, if you've got questions, you'll have to ask me or, or someone else on the team that's, that's in there, because she doesn't sell houses right now. We're, we're considering getting her license just so she can be legal when she answers that question without doing that. So does anybody have any questions on tracking your number? Great explanation, Carrie. Good job. Got it? Okay. We're getting close to time. This is your KW Bucks. Most of you understand this. This is in there. This is how you earn extra. This is me paying you in coaching to learn the business. And at the end of the year, we're going to have an auction. Carrie talked about this a little bit earlier. She tracks your KW Bucks. So if you go on a listing appointment, you get points. Listings taken, you get points. Listings closed, you get points. If you listen to a training, a webinar, a podcast, any of those things, you get points. Open houses, you get points. If you bring a new agent, a prospect to PC, you get points. A lot of times I'll say, okay, here's a thousand dollars extra for people that do this, you know, and we probably need to give a thousand dollar extra. We probably have to do more than a thousand dollars for tomorrow with that. So what's going to happen at the end of the year, we're going to have a party, even if we can't get together. I'm hoping by then we can get together a little bit, but we're going to get gifts from lenders and people like that. And we're going to auction them off. And this becomes real money to buy. We have done like uh, flat screen TVs. We've done coaching, like with some of the maps coaches, we've donated some time with that. We've had um, lots of different things, things that you would want. Bluetooth. Uh, we had an iPad at one point, we had a laptop computer at one point. These are gonna be things that you're gonna want this. This turns into real money. So this is my way of putting a carrot out there in front of you to get you to learn. Eric laughs at me with all these little carrots that we have. Um, what does it take to make a thousand dollars a week? I don't think we necessarily need to do this because we just went through that. Um, I have four minutes, 10 traits, strong work ethic, you need to have market knowledge, get in the MLS, look at the market, look at our statistics. We put those out there for you. You know, don't be shocked like I was last night that Bentonville had no listings uh, and up to 150,000, none. I can tell you what, Bella Vista on the lake, I'm looking for something on the lake, I know those. Last night I almost had a panic attack because a new one came on that I liked and I don't have time today because I've got all these coaching things to go look at it. It will be sold by tonight. I mean, that's how fast things are happening. There were seven when I went on there at one o'clock last night. I thought I'd check it before I went to bed. There was eight. And I went, oh, there's another one on here. And it actually looked pretty good. I mean, guys, we got to know those kind of things. We, we need to check them in the morning is what I need to do. So uh, anticipation and preparation. Know where you're going, what you're going to do. Have your, if you're going to do a virtual listing presentation, have it down. Practice it on Zoom. Know what you're going to say to those different things. So be prepared. Communication, superior communication. Guys, listen more than you talk. It is so important that you communicate, that you ask the right questions because they're looking for relevant information. When you start to show a buyer something and they say, I want a four bedroom, three bath, and you send them three bedroom, two bath, they immediately think you're not listening and really don't care. It needs to be relevant. So listen, a commitment to education. You're making com a commitment by being here, a commitment to bold, to be an ignite. All the things that we bring you that's gonna make your career uh, more stable with the systems. 
loyalty and partnership. Um, you know, find the people that make a difference in your life. Find a mentor. You know, you're in coaching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to pour into your life. That's that's one of the things that that's my passion. It's what I love to do. Honesty and integrity. You've got to tell the truth. If they said that they went into the house and it smelled like cat pee, then you need to soften it a little bit. It's got an odor. We need to do something with this. Sometimes it's really hard to get that out. I don't know where that came from, but you've got to be truthful because it's not going to sell if it stinks with that. Um, and also if it's not selling, it's back to price. So when you list that house, you need to have that conversation with them in the very beginning that, you know, the market is changing daily. Every 30 days, we're going to go over this. You're going to have an option. If we have no offers and a lot of people looking, we know it's priced. If we have a lot of offers and they're way under where we have it priced, it's priced. So you need to talk to them about these things so they're not shocked when you call them in 30 days and go, we need to lower the price. That doesn't work, guys. Have the conversation in the very beginning. Take pride. Be passionate about what you do. You want to be to the point where a seller looks at you and says, David, oh my gosh, you love your job, don't you? Because they can tell that you've studied these statistics. You understand where you're going, why you're doing this. When you get through with that listing presentation, they need to understand how you came up with that number. They need, to, what I say at the end, I don't tell them. I said, now, Mr. Seller, what do you feel like after I've shown you everything and how I came to, to this market, what do you feel like price per square foot your home ought to be at? Because I'm using that for one of my talking points. And we'll go through this next week. And then they can tell you where they think it ought to be. Now, if you say, what price do you think your house ought to be? Oh, uh, $225. Well, that's $100 a foot higher than where it needs to be there because that's, but they do want $225. Do you think we could get that with what the market is saying? You take them back to the market. These are your closing techniques. And we'll talk about that next week. Setting your goals and a sense of community. We've been over every one of those. I've said this to you um, earlier today. You never fail unless you quit, you either win or you lose. How can you dominate this real estate market in the middle of COVID? Be more open-minded than you've ever been, deciding what program, what's best for you and how you're gonna accomplish it. Talk to others about things you can do, not things you can't do. Look for people that are enthusiastic, for people that are successful, believe in their business, find out what they're going to do and how they're gonna achieve that success. So that's how you're gonna dominate. Mindset, I've said to you, over and over and over during this, this session that it's important that your mindset is there. On the right-hand side, repeat after me, I am about to walk into the greatest year of my life. Say that, every one of you, unmute yourself and say that. I'm about to walk into the greatest, hello, are y'all there? All right. Unmute yourself. You got it? Yeah. All right, now yeah. we're gonna say it. I'm about to walk, about to walk into, the, into greatest the greatest year greatest of my year. life. Real estate, you got this. Guys, you can do this. So these actions, your actions, your mindset, <laughs> always follow your beliefs. Stay focused. What you focus on expands. Go. That's a, a bold law. Know your goals, review them often. Stay on your schedule. We've talked about that. You be the leader. No negative conversation. Decide every day you're going to face your fears and succeed. Uh, read motivational books, listen to podcasts, listen to webinars, feed your brain the positive stuff, review your goals and your schedule and your daily 411, and keep affirmations in front of you. I suggest that you put your affirmations in your notes, title it affirmations, and go there every morning and just read them. What drives you? I'm two minutes past, I'm almost through, guys. If you've got to get off, you can get off. I want to be uh, respectful of your time. Uh, what is your big why? Are you willing to do whatever it takes? You've got to think through these questions. The purpose that is bigger than us drives us when we're about to give up. You have to understand that. Find that purpose and hang on to it. Positive affirmations make a difference to you in the day that you're saying them. You just have to make a decision. Are you committed to success in 2020? Don't give up when you can go further. Don't stop. I need your best. I'm looking for 10 cappers. Do you want to be one of those before December? I'm going to push those 10 people really, really hard. Don't overthink your plan. Have blind faith. Remember, if some of you have not seen that Facing Your Giants, I challenge you to go into YouTube and watch that, at least that little clip that's that's probably about five minutes long, and it talks about um, Coach Taylor and Brock and how, I'm going to open this up for just a second, have has anybody on here seen that? 
who has not seen that clip? If you've not seen it, David. So the rest no, of I've you, seen it. Sorry. Seen it. Has anyone else? Is there anyone that has not seen it? Has anybody else seen it? Raise your hand if you've seen it. Yes. Okay. So you remember in there where they tell Brock, they tell him, you know, he says, how far do you think you can go? And Brock says, I think I can go to the 20 with no one on my back. Well, what did Coach Taylor do? He blindfolded him. And why did he blindfold him? Why do y'all think he blindfolded him? So the coach could prove where he actually can go. He didn't want him to stop before he got to where he – he could really go if he dug deep in with Sodom. And where did he end up? He didn't make it to the 20, to the 50. Where did he end up? The end zone. The end zone. And what did he do when he got there? He said, Coach, I can't go any further. I'm tired. I, you know, I can't do it. I can't do it. And he just fell down. And Coach Taylor said, Brock, look up. Look up. You're in the end zone. That's what I dad gum want to do with you guys. I want you capping. I want you successful in this business. I want you, if you have to blindfold yourself and do what I tell you to do, you can do it. Your fears will clobber your faith. Oh, I'm not going to do this. I put that on there. <laughs> Understand the length of time. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither success, the success in this business. Learn the basics. Hold yourself accountable and uh, for the things that you say you're going to do. Be committed in there. All right. These are examples and I am done. I was a few minutes late. I almost thought I was really late. I'm gonna open this up. I am gonna stop sharing and you guys are free. Do you have any questions? Did you learn something in this one? Do you feel better about your goals? Catherine, you're really new. What do you think, girl? Is it better? Yes. All right. Uh, yes, you? no, this is gonna definitely help. Good. You ready to go? Anybody on here want to be my capper by the end of the year? Woohoo! Take those names down, <laughs> Carrie. All right, now don't do this lightly, okay? Hey, Link, are you there still? Type yes or something. <laughs> All right, yes. All right. Okay, so. Uh, Watch for the emails. We are sending one email out to everybody. We have separated productivity coaching. So y'all are gonna get what's happening, the schedule, those kind of things. It's gonna be coming through our email system that we've got. I can tell whether you know it or not. I can tell if you open it. I can't tell how long you looked at it, but I can tell if you opened it. So I encourage you to open it. We don't just send garbage out. We're sending stuff out to help you guys. Any more questions? You ready to, you fired up? All right. Sounds good. Listen, guys, I um, appreciate you being here. Thank you. And hopefully we'll see you this afternoon to talk about your personality profiling. Hey, uh, yes. real quick power day. I have a wedding to go to that afternoon. So I could do Is it. Is it yours? Morning. No, it's no the... excuse then. No, I'm just decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I could make it that morning, just that afternoon. I'll have to go down to Little Rock. Okay. No, that's fine. I mean, that's understandable. We'll have another power day. Okay. So, I mean, if you need to not be part of that, do you have your, is there anyone on here that doesn't, Catherine, you got your license back? I know you're brand new. Cause I've been telling people they can get on here without their license. Is there anyone in this group without a license from the ARC? That's why, Landon, I was thinking you didn't have yours yet. There's not a lot you can do on Power Day anyway. Okay. Um, you can call a third party, you can get an appointment for somebody else, those kind of things. Uh, if they go out and knock on doors, you could go with them just as a learning experience. Um, you know, if you find during this time that you find somebody that wants to list their house, let us know. We'll list it and give it back to you. <laughs> Get it done. Um, so, okay. Yeah. But yes, you've got an excuse for tomorrow if you want to, because you, you can't do anything. I don't want you to miss, but, and I appreciate you telling me that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, hey, guys. I got another thing, Marcella, too, for Pivot. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that, and I'm doing that at 1 o'clock and on Thursday, too. So... You're talking that, about bold. bold oh, pivot. bold. Sorry, bold pivot. Yes. Sorry. Yes. yes. Yeah. You understand that bold is recorded and so is mine. So you can get the recording on either one of those. But the deal is, is you have to, I need to make up something. If you're going to listen to mine on a recording, you can also listen to bold on a recording. I told Eric this morning because I don't want to compete. I had somebody in my coaching class that, 
called me yesterday and said, Marcella, I really, I took bold last time. And she said, you know, I am, um, I'm a little concerned because I'm going to miss four weeks of coaching. And she said, this has made such a difference in my career. Um, and so we don't want to compete. Bold is a really good thing. Bold is a really good thing. Uh, hopefully everything I'm giving you every week is a really good thing. You know, it's making a yeah. difference. With yeah. that. So you need to probably watch the recording to stay up with everything uh, that's in there, either in coaching, watch the recording, get it from Carrie. Carrie can just send you that link out. If we know they're going to bold and you want to do that, then I think bold recordings stay up for a long time too. I think there's, there's still some up from last time that was in there. So it's a good thing. So if you're going to bold, then um, you, are you going, anybody else going to bold that's on here? Okay. You'll be the only one. If you're going to bold. I'm meeting at the Benville office. I'm meeting at the Benville office with some people for today. Um, but for the rest of the time, I mean, I'll, I'll watch the recording for bold and, and, and well, I'm not, that. yeah, I'm not asking you to do that. Just both of them are recorded, David. Yeah, and so I'm, no. I'm glad that you're going to bold. I think it will help you. So we'll hold you accountable. We need to know the goals that you set for bold. Gotcha. Okay. So we'll hold you accountable to those too. So, all right, good deal. Any more questions? Okay. This is recorded. Carrie, thank you. Ma did it. <laughs> She's grinning at me. She's supposed to start the recording and I asked her to talk in the beginning and I don't think she knew I was going to do that that first. And I was going around, okay, where is that button? Where do we record this thing? So, okay, guys, we're going to turn it off. We'll see you later. See you at one o'clock, some of you, okay? All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.